Hello and welcome back to my studio. I'm Gina and I am really excited to start or come back to this project. I've started this a wee while ago and then just put it on pause. So this is the Victorian mansion and it has a very 70s interior. I have just recently finished a project where I spent a bit of time on the exterior so now I'm really enthused to do the exterior of this building because I really want to weather it and I really want to make it look as run down as possible while having the interior ultra modern 1973 looks like it's just come out of a house and garden magazine. The story behind this one is that this is actually the photo shoot for the magazine. They didn't need to worry about the exterior of the building because that wasn't going to be photographed, they only worried about the interior of the building. But in order for me to do the exterior I need to finish the interior. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time finishing off at least the wall and floor details. Um, for the entranceway I need to work out what I'm going to do with the stairs and then also this little entranceway as well. I'm probably going to do some sort of 70s wood panelling effect and I'm likely to do the same up the top of the hallway. What I need to do is just get this into a state where I can start gluing the walls together because at the moment they are literally in like they're just they're just sitting there which I'm very lucky to have such an awesome kit um, which has been laser cut and everything does actually fit really nicely together. So let's see how much I can get done over this weekend. <laughs> So now that it's all taken apart I can lie everything flat which makes it a lot easier to decorate and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and label all of the entryway areas. Because there's multiple intersecting walls into the space I just wanted to make sure that I don't miss any and even more importantly that I don't decorate the wrong side for whatever reason. So for this area I've decided to do a board and batten type panelling effect and to do this I'm going to use the wall as it is and then I'm going to add in the detail with some matte board and I'm just cutting a few pieces to different widths. For the pieces around the window I've actually pre-painted these because I didn't want to get any paint on the window area or the glass so um, I just painted up a couple of strips and I'm going to work my way around the door and then anything left over from those those links that I pre-cut I can use for the skirting boards and any of the other details that I can use up any of the excess. So these are some thinner strips that I've cut just out of the same matte board. I haven't really needed to paint these or pre-paint these and once I put a coat of brown over everything it will all bring the whole project together. If you're new here welcome to my channel and if you haven't done so already consider hitting that subscribe button and to all of you who are already subscribed welcome back I really hope that you enjoy this video By fitting these two wall pieces together it just makes it a lot easier to make sure that all of the horizontal lines line up and it means I can just easily mark where they need to go.
Moving on to the middle entrance way, I'm going to have a go at doing some sort of 70s wood panelling. And it's the vertical panelling where there's like strips of um, veneer, I think it is, and they're all different widths. So almost gives like a barcode effect. And in order to do that, there is a little bit of a gap in between each piece. So I'm just painting all of the backs of these parts of the walls in black just so that uh, get a bit of a shadow line in between. And then I'm going to use some scrapbook paper. Uh, I'm going to use the other side, but I'm just going to cut it over onto this white side. And I'm just going to cut some strips. Now I've cut them at 8mm, 5mm and 3mm um, in width. And then I'm just going to go through and just randomly put them into any sort of pattern, trying to mix them up as best I can and trying not to get too many, you know, re reoccurring patterns out of them. So I've been thinking about these stairs for quite a while. This is how they come in the kit, which has got this um, really awesome detail on it, which is a little bit more Victorian. And I've been sort of thinking about different ideas and had to play around with one of them because I knew that uh, by not putting in the top stairs, because I'm going to have that top part of the hallway uh, sort of double height gave me an op opportunity to play around and actually I quite like how this has turned up because what would have normally happened is if there was a renovation in an older property a lot of the period details were taken out they did they were just removed so I just sort of thought this would be uh, an ideal opportunity to show the difference between the inside and the outside but just by simplifying the balustrade on the stairs so I'm just going to work my way through removing those. I'm just going to leave the top and the bottom one just so that that top handrail stays into place. And then just sort of squaring up any of these edges so that I can glue some of these wee dowels into place. And I'm using some 3mm dowel. I've used this one, this sized dowel before and a few other projects and it's really great for the size. And yeah, I'm just going to cut these down and uh, put them into place. So to cover up the holes where the stair treads will be fitting into for this uh, particular kit, I'm just using a basically a sort of cereal box cardboard, so sort of thin -er cardboard, and uh, just cutting a strip and putting those, uh, gluing that into place, which works perfectly well. So moving on to adding in all of the stair treads. So this is, this actually tested my patience quite a bit. Not this part. This part was the nice easy part, putting all of these parts in. Um, it wasn't until I got to trying to fit in the other side. And you can kind of see there that they're not all exactly lined up and beautifully um, ready to just fit this other piece in. So it took a lot of tweaking and manipulating and holding my breath and... <sighs> taking a deep breath and uh, we got there in the end so I'm really pleased with how this has turned out um, and I'm really pleased with the balustrade because I think it's really going to fit with the style of the building so I'm just going to give it a quick coat of paint this is the same brown paint that I'm using for pretty much all of the project and it is the burnt umber and that helps bring it all together with the different materials on the balustrade and it really does come together quite nicely
So for the attic space, uh, I'm going to do a lather plaster type of effect and I am using some cardboard. So it's the same cardboard that I used on the side of the stair case or the stair, yeah, the staircase and just sort of that cereal box cardboard and I've cut, just cut some small strips of one to two millimeters thick and then I'm just going to layer these up horizontally around the room and this is going to give me the uh, look of the lath and for the I'm not going to do plaster but I'm going to do sort of a newspaper type of effect. Now I'm assuming that if this was a uh, a house that has been redecorated for a photo shoot then there's really highly unlikely that they would have spent any time or money or effort on decorating the attic so this is going to be a little bit more aged and it's going to give the that sort of juxtaposition of the modern 70s interior to the Victorian rundown sort of attic space as well as obviously the exterior as well. So for the uh, newspaper I just got a picture and reduced that down on my computer before I printed it off and just to kind of make sure that the scale was about right and then just tearing these small pieces apart I'm just going to randomly put them into place and making sure I'm not going to cover all of the lath but I'm just going to um, make sure that it's got some uh, added details in the attic uh, and then I'm just going to cover that with a sort of a brown wash paint effect. For the door frame I'm just going to use the same cardboard and I've just traced the shape of the door and then drawn a square shape around for the actual architrave which makes it very easy to cut out because I can just use a pair of scissors to do that. And if you've come this far and like what you see hit that like button and drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and I am always more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. So for the wash I'm just using that same burnt umber colour or brown colour and just diluting that with quite a lot of water and then just very lightly going over all of the lath and the newspaper. Because the newspaper has been torn the paint is going to stick a bit more to the edges of where it's been torn so it's going to give it a little bit more dimension. And then just mixing in a little bit of black I'm just going to go around the, the edges of the door frame and then also the edges sort of where it would meet the roof and floor just to kind of add some more details in there. So I just want to add in one more project into the ground floor which is a coat rack with some coats on it and I'm just going to make this using some popsicle stick and some toothpicks and then I'm going to use a bit of scrap fabric and I've got this little figurine which is absolutely to scale and so I'm just measuring him off just to make sure that, that I get the right dimensions. Now I'm not actually going to make a coat or I'm not going to make anything out of that but I do want the fabric to fall as if it is that sort of coat like look. So I've just created sort of some faux sleeves and I'm just sort of using glue strategically into place I'm sort of crinkling the fabric up and then gluing it where, where appropriate. So I've got three different pieces of fabric um, and they all ended up by gluing in differently because they all sat differently. One was a bit thicker and it needed a bit more glue, the other ones seemed to kind of fall quite nicely. And then this is the entrance way, I'm just making sure that I'm gluing this at the right height, so I want to make sure it's roughly around eye level. And then uh, these are my three different coats, so I've got quite a colourful one, which I'm going to put at the back. One that's sort of more, more of a muted colour, and then sort of a blanket type coat. And yeah, so that's what it looks like, and I am pretty stoked with how it's turned out. Mm -hmm. 